There you go. Welcome everyone to Cheryl Klein's tying with uh, what you might have around the house. So, you know, everybody crawl under their bed for dust bunnies and dust mops and oh boy, this is going to be fun, fun, fun. I've seen, I've seen what she's going to use. Uh, thank you Fly Fishers International for, for providing the Zoom forum. Uh, this is sponsored by FFI Women Connect. I'm the co-chair of Women Connect, Sandy Carpenter. Our chair is Patty Lucan. Uh, she's up in the corner on my screen. Hi, Patty. Hello. Um, and so if any of you are not members or need to find us, go on, send us a note at womenconnect at flyfishersinternational.org. Join our mailing list so you can get the invite to the expos and the fly tying and the women's meetings and all, all kind of fun stuff. New Year's parties, black tie events. I mean, it, <laughs> you, you just, you know, uh, uh, kiss your Blarney fly. You just don't know what's going to show up on, on, uh, on fly tying nights. We also have a Facebook page, FFI Women Connect. We have a Facebook group, Fly Fishers International Women Connect. So find us. We have an Instagram page. Um, these are recorded and they show up on YouTube. So um, look for Fly Fishers International uh, Fly Tying. So let me, I'm going to highlight your face first. This is this is this is Ms. Skeeto right here. Oh boy, I love that name. Um, are you going to tie a Ms. We'll have to get her to tie a Ms. Skeeto sometime. Um, <laughs> so this is Cheryl. I've known Cheryl for a lot of years because we're we're also on another board together, and uh, um, she just is a faithful, faithful, faithful member that always shows up. Uh, she's given us advice for our board, so. Um, She's pretty invaluable. We're going to get her in a bigger role sometime. She just doesn't know it yet. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she is very organized. So this is gonna this is gonna be a lot of fun tonight. All right, let me move that and let me highlight your fly. And so welcome, Cheryl. Why don't you take it over and I'll highlight? Do you want to say a few things or do you want me to zoom into the fly right now? Um. Oh, why, why don't we, I, I'm not, well, let me say something to start with. Um, All right, let me put I you am, back up. I'm broadcasting from my motor home. And, <laughs> um, uh, so I uh, had a couple of things not work well today. And I uh, have a great deal of admiration for people that are uh, doing Zoom and tying at the same time now. <laughs> Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, right. So we're, we're in recovery effort. And I, and I have one question um, because I'm not in my motorhome. It's been real quiet all day. And now I see somebody across the street is cleaning carpets. Is that sound coming across? No, no. not hearing it. No. Okay, good. Um, and uh, so I am on a swivel chair and I have everything laid out behind me on a couch and I'm on the end of a table and it's not as steady as can be. And so if, if the camera moves and I don't notice it, let me know. Um, and, and so I'll be swinging back and forth. So I am excited to see how many people are here tonight, or it's afternoon in Alaska. Um, I, because I realize that what I'm suggesting tying is not exactly a difficult tie, but uh, one of my emphasis in tying is trying to catch other especially young people catch their interest in being a fly tire. Um, and, and that's something I really, I love tying with people that have done it, the, doing it the first time and doing what I can to catch them. So um, these are flies to catch new tires. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I know all of us uh, will uh, teach a woolly bugger or something of that nature as a, as a first fly, um, but these flies are all fairly simple, but they also catch fish really well. And um, one of the difficulties that I've said, because I've noticed with new tires, because I, I give out my phone number and tell people text me no matter what time it is, if you need help continuing on or finding materials. And the problem is usually materials. Um, and I also see people hesitant to try the, the materials that they have all around them. Um, or they try everything they have and tie flies that are not very effective. 
So this is an effort to, to, to come up with some information that'll bridge that gap, both using materials that, that are easily available without spending an arm and a leg at the fly shop for a tiny little package of something, but um, also uh, developing in a uh, beginner's mind uh, some of the principles of tying a fly that's effective. You know, I'm the first, if I have a five-year-old that wants to tie, let them tie whatever they will. Um, but it's also, I think, well worthwhile to give them a little guidance in terms of thinking about what the fly does along the way. Um, I just realized I usually have glasses, clear glasses of water and <laughs> dip the flies in to show the kids, but I, I can't do everything at once. I also th think I maybe bit on more than I could chew um, in terms of doing three flies. And I, I did that originally because they're all very simple. But on the other hand, what I have to say about them is a little bit more complex. I realize as I'm laying materials out. Um, so I, I guess, are, are there any questions before I start off on the details of this? Well, Cheryl, if you don't get finished tonight, can you come back and do uh, what you didn't get done? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, no problem. <laughs> now, so there's now, no pressure. <clears throat> okay, now that I've got how to set up in the motorhome figured out. And I did that partly because I have a dog and laying out the materials for more than one fly was disaster. <laughs> and <laughs> one of the things I uh, <laughs> reminded, reminded myself as I was laying my materials out with, with a, a, actually with everyone, I try to stress some safety things with um, uh, fly tying too. And uh, one of the first things is you're using hooks and hooks can be very dangerous both to you and your brothers and sisters and mom and dad and your dog and cat. So when you take a hook out of a package, count them and put them someplace with a magnet and keep track of them. So what did I do today? I started dropping flies on the floor. <laughs> I mean, hooks on the floor. And as I was thinking, be sure to say that. But anyway, so I think uh, sometimes... Ow! We <laughs> good job, mother. What did you do? <laughs> what was that? The owl. I don't know. Oh. Somebody said owl. Yeah, it was appropriate. In, anyway, the um, the, another thing that I I do. Where you go? I I uh, you can go ahead and spotlight the the um the hook, and I'll use that that screen. So. I, I use these are just cuts of um, pool noodles, this uh, smaller size. And they're real easy to cut with a knife. And I, I, I give one of those to each new tire. And when they put take a hook or fly off the vise, I have them stick the hook on like that, then release the vise. So it makes sure it stays in their hand. That's a, um, it also makes it easy to take the, the fly off and then put head cement on it or adjust it. Um, and so that's just another little thing. I'm sure, sure tip, some, of, Cheryl. Some, of, some of you will have other ideas as we go along too and hope you'll interrupt. Um, Al, did I get, you get that great idea? What? How did I get I'm that great idea? I'm writing it down idea? as we speak. That's okay. what I thought. I, no, Al is okay. always writing down all these well, good ideas. So I well, want to make sure he got this one. Okay, I'll tell you, I, this is really funny. I teach casting and so I buy pool noodles and cut them in half and use them for people to see the motion that's not, you know, it's not like the, like a clock arm, but to, to just to see that motion and help each other correct for that motion. I had a piece left and I um, was, didn't want to throw it away. And I thought, well, what, I could tie a fly out of that. And I thought, yeah, I could. And then I thought, oh man, that's perfect to hook the flies onto. And you know, when, when you're drying flies and all, all kinds of things. And then, so I, I started caring because I had enough and I had a, a session with kids. So there were gonna be 15 kids. So I made one for everybody so they could put their fly on it and go home. And I thought, well, that's a really good idea. <laughs> pretty, pretty cheap, but, um, it, it, they, and it, you could use all different colors. And so one, one of the other things that I do is I try to, um, to remember that people learn in all, all different ways and um, that it's to some degree selling. So using bright colors, um, I will often put out ahead of time if I'm setting up uh, 
a bright colored handkerchief, different colors at each place and, and set up a vice. So that the, and that has multiple things. One is color, but the other is when people that haven't tied before are, start tying, there's usually stuff everywhere when they're done. And if you have a, a small piece of cloth under the vise, it's amazing how it gathers things. Um, I, I also use paper sacks and tape paper sack in front of each tire. Um, and it, you know, ask them to put their stuff in there and tell them they could take it all home because there's plenty of uh, tying material in there. But the, the, the cloth actually helps a lot. Another, another thing to use the cloth for is to um, ahead of time separate materials, not hooks, but everything else and just make layers and then you can have it all ready and pass out a handkerchief and say, open it up and there you go. There's your materials for the fly. Um, oh, wow, that's so, a great idea. Yeah, and idea. paper paper yeah. towels work well for that too. Sort of, sort of easier if you're just doing tying materials for that. But um, some of the particularly polyester tablecloths work really good for spreading out everywhere to, to gather all this stuff up. And then there's usually somebody that wants everything left on the tablecloth, so they'll scoot their hand and get it together and hold on to it. Okay, so um, under the flies, the mop fly to me is quite a miracle. And so I'm holding up one here. This this has uh, oh the uh, it's not cactus chenille, but light cactus chenille, the really fine chenille for a head, rather than the what I have on the recipe. Um, which is, I'll use more of a veil, just using dubbing. And, and this one, the reason, well, I've had people tie this fly not believing it would work at all. They go out and are just astonished how well it works. And my theory is it's a really enlarged caddis or the fish are seeing kind of the profile. And with this one, um, so what I do is I, I use different colors of the mop material and explain that it can be used for different things. This one uh, is actually a saltwater version. I didn't tie it on a saltwater hook, unfortunately, but this represents a little mole crab in the Southern California beaches and works quite effectively. The mops are flies that you wanna squeeze and get wet so they sink quickly. And that's one of the things that helps. They really do get down um, for as simple as they are to tie it without weighting them. Um, and then another version, so you, you can talk about all the different things you could tie if you think about that you actually are imitating a real something. I'm gonna, where are my glasses? Oh. I also have vision issues, so I have four or five different pairs of glasses. So this one is, a crane fly larva, which at the right time of year is a tasty bite. I'm sure some of you know that. And I've colored the beige colored mop. It's not showing up very well. With a Sharpie. So it looks a little bit more mottled and not all the same color. And you could of course do that with all of them. And some beginners really get into the, oh wow, we can color the materials part too. Um, so what are we starting with? Probably you've all come across the mop materials in one form or another. This is a, a dust mop. You can get them, oh, three for $5 or something like that and different, all different colors. Uh, and you don't have to cut up the whole mop. You can just take pieces off the bottom so you have a, a large variety. <laughs> or, and they're, I call those the tentacles of the bodies. And when I'm tying with beginners, I'll have a bag with different colors of mop in it. You could also see there's some tinsel stuff from Christmas that makes really good eyes. And is all, th those eyes are also very easy to tie on. Little piece of chamois, which makes a really good worm, just to cut a strip of it. And squirmy wormies, um, just, just worm material to tie those squirmy wormies. Seems like there's something else in here, but anyway, uh, all, all really easy things. And you lay a package of this down, and somebody that hasn't tied realizes how so easily they put together a fly can be pretty excited about it. Excuse me. Yeah. 
No, I thought I was on mute and I blew my nose and I was I shut my video <laughs> off instead of my uh, my uh, microphone. So I apologize. Oh, I was pretty sure that was a trout rising. Yeah. Um, um, your uh, your your uh, hooks just a little bit out of focus too. I don't know if you're you you know what I I don't think I could do anything about it. Um, oh, okay. Because it's a phone and I'm on cell. And I can't get it to focus any That's better. better. Is that better? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. And actually, it's uh, in order to get my vice at the right level so I can have light on it. And so, gotcha. so, so that's all you see. Uh, I, it's sitting on a pan, <laughs> cooking pan. And anyway, I'm using three cooking pans in this set. <laughs> it's fun. Um, so anyway, I'll have, have this ready to go is, is what I'm really going to be tying with people so I just I, I show them what the other material is but the this mop stuff you can either cut it in strips oh, I have a strip somewhere oh so this this is a piece of a gray strip and you see it's um, if you cut it with the, the fabric I mean with the, the how it's stitched on um, it well, I don't know, there's advantages to doing it both ways. But anyway, you want to cut the segment separately. Or, and this is fun, you can pull one of those strips out and you have a chenille. And when people are looking for different kinds of material, they're pretty excited. All of a sudden they have chenilles, every color of mop they've got. Of course, this is going to take more than just the little edge of a mop cutting the tentacles off. Um, and... Then the mops have been effective enough, that much to my surprise, okay. you, no you can buy what's called mop chenille now <laughs> in various colors. And I, I was really surprised to see this because for the price of this, you could buy a whole bunch of mop dusters. Anyway, um, let's see, what else do I have on the mop? I think I've about covered what I wanted to say there. Oh, okay. So today we're going to be using, uh, I, I'm just using a size 12 hook. I, I like to use Barbie's hook. So that's what I've got. Let's see if we can get that in focus. There you go. And not flashing. Um, and I, I do like a little bit of a curve to it. So this, the, the scud pupa hook is a great one. And this is this just a hook that I like. Um, and that's what I've got tied on and that the others are on. Uh, for the saltwater, I would obviously have used a saltwater hook if I could have found the hook quickly enough. Um, but uh, another saltwater fly that's effective with the mop is using the red and then root beer colors or oranges or yellows and more for bay fishing, but also you can catch fish in the surf with it. Um, so it's, it's, it's fairly easy to do. Let's see, I'm gonna take, I think I will go ahead and tie a red one. So, so here I've um, pulled the mop material. I, I cut it and then pulled it away from the fabric. And um, so, so what you're gonna do is treat it just like regular Chanel. You're gonna cut it and expose the threads a little bit. I hope somebody's tying along. They probably finished four of these already. Um, so you just pick off the, the bottom fuzz on the, on it. So now I've got that segment ready. So I'm going to look at my hook here and here's where we, you get into proportions a little bit. So, um, Using the same hook, I have my little mole fly and the body is fairly short because the little uh, mole crab is very, very short. And the bright orange, and this color is really good for that actual creature in the surf. And this little bit of orange represents the egg sacs. And this fly is most effective in August when the 
moles are full of egg sacs rolling in the surf for corbina and perch. And, um, so this fly is, is going to be more of a kind of a, it, well, I don't really know what it imitates actually, but in San Diego, both in the bay and in the surf, sort of red, loosely wiggly things work really well. So you get this wet and it, it's sort of a game of, it, are you getting that fly down deep enough? If something else isn't, it's worth trying a mop. They do absorb the moisture really well and will sink very quickly. So I'm gonna go with twice the hook length for this one. Um, there's a fly called the multimedia that is uh, very effective and it's, just it has lots of different kinds of materials on it and it's kind of red hued. So, so you wanna leave like usual about an, the length of an eye behind when you start. And, and here, the primary reason that you're putting a thread bed down is just to, to make sure that, that the, uh, when you get the mop tied on that it's unsecure. There's not much of a body on this. Of course, you could make it much more elaborate, and I'd certainly in, encourage beginners to go ahead and do that. And then it's a, it, it can tend to roll to the side and, and can be a little bit tough to get on tight enough. So like you would with other materials like that, you wanna do a really good pinch, two of those, and make sure it's tightened up really good and give a couple more wraps. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this. And go over it a little bit, try to get the threads out of the way so you're going to have a little bit better eye. But uh, actually, from here on out, it's this is sort of the creative part. You can as I showed with the, uh, whoops, oh dear. Get that off the floor before I step on it. With the caddis, um, it, it, uh, it, I've left a little bit more room for the collar there and the collar is the diameter of, of the uh, body segment. But when I, that's, this is one of the early ones that I tied. And so it works really well, but I find that that's a lot of trouble <laughs> given what will still work, work well. So instead I suggest that, that tires think of using dubbing material as a veil. And so I'm gonna use some, um, I keep forgetting which way the camera's going. Uh, Senyo laser dove, fluorescent hot orange on this. And you're just gonna, I'm sure you're all better at dubbing than I am. But what I'm gonna do is just wrap it around. and create a, a veiled effect. I use this really effectively, the same veil as in dubbing um, for flies for silver salmon. That are, the body is pretty much, it's got a bunny tail and then a wrapped bunny and then a veiled head and bright contrasting colors. So another thing that works really well. So then you just sort of pick the veil loose. So you notice I put on two layers and I'm going to put on a third covering the front here. So when you do this, beginners are just astonished how little stuff it takes. So I'm sure you're experienced with dubbing period, how, how far it goes. At this point, I usually point out how oh, there's dubbing everywhere. Um, they could take Even fibers, whoops, cover the camera. Fibers 
off of the chenille that they've got. You can mix that with longer fibers. So I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of pink dubbing here. Change the colors around. So anything that's fabric or thread can be taken apart and turned into great dubbing. Or you could, um, uh, dryer lint is excellent. You know, just as it comes out of the dryer, you get interesting colors, but you can also stick something in the dryer that you want the color of. Uh, and there's great fabrics that lose a lot in the dryer and make great dubbing. Anyway, you, you get the idea. So you could change, change the colors up, have short fibers, long fibers. Um, there's several people making great dubbing things that they claim that the source of their dubbing was originally just the discards on their fly, fly time bench and are usually are using quite a bit of fluorescent materials or UV materials. And, and I kind of like that, especially for bay and surf flies. Let's see if I want to get. So now I've got, with this one, I would add a little something because I think it would work well. And make another point about materials. I think I'm going to add a few legs. Now this is just a piece of uh, rubber stretching, stretchy material. I'm not even sure what it came from on. I think it was something was wrapped and tied with it. I don't know, maybe it's a tourniquet, um, but it's excellent leg material. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna put a couple legs on here. And it takes a little bit of extra time to cut this out off compared to pulling out a strand of silly legs, but not that long. So if I were to continue, if I make it through all flies, you'll see this technique used again. So you make a loop towards the front. Tie it over the top. So that's to place the legs kind of on the side and secure it really well. And I'm going to pull these back a little bit. They're not quite as long as I went on the front. So let's see if I can't get a little bit more out there. And then I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and put a head on this. We'll build up a little head. Try to get, capture those fibers, make it a nice head just because you guys are all watching here. <laughs> okay, and then I'll do a whip finish. If, if there were beginners along the way, I would be suggesting that um, they always wrap away from them like boats going out to sea and that they always cut on top so everything else is hanging down. Of course, my legs are in the way, so I would say, well, cut your legs off there so you can cut your thread by pulling up. And you, you can't always do that, but if you, if you can and you always do it the same way, it'll save flies. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull these down a little bit. And I think that it's a little bit too reddish. So I'm gonna take my marker and give them some color. So maybe what I'm doing is trying to um, make sense out of the, the uh, I don't know, I guess I'd say hearsay of using these mops for flies instead of just going ahead and tying a traditional mop. But the goal really is to let people use the skills and materials that they have 
And then once they start asking, well, now what? Then you catch one to something else. Actually, that would look really good if I'd put one of those Christmas tree tinsel eyes on it too. And, but surprisingly, as light as this fly is, once it's wet, it will sink well. But you can also imagine have quite a bit of motion in the water. So there's a mop. Any, any questions or other ideas that people have of things to do with mops? I had not seen the veil on there. I like that. That's yeah. A, we use and those you know, here and they're very effective. Do you use bales? No, we use uh, the mop fly. M mops? Uh-huh. Which color? Uh, white works probably the best. I also use a green one. Uh, I've used have, red. I've used orange. Do you have any theory about what the fish thinks they're imitating? Well, I like the caddis on the green. Uh -huh. uh, the orange, you know, I'm assuming it's an attractor or the red. Uh, you know, I don't know. The white. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we have this uh, nasty mossy stuff here. Might be that. <laughs> uh -huh. Huh. Mold, whatever be, it is. Yeah. The red ones could be salmon spawn, especially with the veiling that you've got on them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, there's um I that I was trying to decide, make it a ocean ocean fly or a salmon spawn. Uh now I'm trying to look for something. Hmm. Well, I've got to get off, Cheryl. Uh, I've okay. got a, a membership meeting that I've got to attend. Thank you so much for that first fly. I really enjoyed <laughs> that, and I liked hearing your uh, your take and how you work with uh, the students because that's great. Anyway, so okay. thank you. Well, thank you for showing up. Um, so, like, besides the mop, another thing that works real easy. Um, this is uh, make fly foam, but you could also use yarn, polyester yarn, all sorts of things. And up here, we do tie an awful lot of eggs. And so to put an egg, th this is just another easy technique, to put an egg on the tip of a fly. This is just the tip of a ballpoint pen. And um, I usually show kids, you could also use the outside of a Crayola Mr. Twisty. Anything that you could get a piece of yarn through, um, it's gonna help you tie an egg fly. And to, to do that, I will use what I use to, to thread all my bobbins. This, this is one of the things to get floss between your teeth. Um, and I just realized this, well, it might work. Um, so you, you thread the yarn through the hole. Then that makes it easy to get, uh, get the thread holder through the tube, whatever tube you have. So I evaluate old pins that have lost their ink based on how, how good they're gonna do this. And I just barely got the tip of that out. So you could see you pull it through. So this would be an expended egg. It's also pretty sparse material for the size of the tube. But the whole point of that is you can have these pre-set up and you, you, you actually see I saved the cap for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you hand them out and suggest people use them, you tell them to very carefully trim off the edge. And you uh, put on a hook, uh, put a couple wraps, put it tight, and then you put a little bit of veil material. You could use a polyester yarn, but do the same thing to make a veiled egg. And it's just another really quick thing to teach. And they, they look magical like veiled eggs all of a sudden for Alaskan kids recognize them immediately. So just that's another quick tip. Okay, so the next thing is you know kids will say well we have we already have feathers and uh, one of the feathers that most kids have seen is um, ostrich because it's used for mops, I mean for dusters and other things. And, and this again, this, this duster was less than $5 and look at all that wonderful material there. Um, and part of what I'm trying to uh, teach here is the parts of the feather. Um, so I'll talk about that and that 
that what we're going to use here is not the whole feather, but just little bits and pieces of it. And that they have probably other feathers. And that feathers come in a lot of different qualities. Sorry about that. Most people will have seen a peacock feather. And so you point out how these are so similar to the material on the mops. Those are the hurls. Um, and you, you know, talk specifically about all the feather parts. And if they have geese, Canada geese, that this feather has lots of uses, but one of the really great things are using these pieces. And so you could, at, at this point, this is like the break thing, show them how those, those biots are used for print snip. And th these feathers I, I gather from the Canadian geese when they start molting before nesting in Anchorage. So something everybody in this town would have available. But also, you know, turkey feathers, the same thing that th these are, none of these are really nice feathers, but they're also feathers that kids might happen to have. And then I'll usually have a whole pheasant, but same thing with the pheasant. All those feathers are things that are in most people's environment somewhere or another. Um, without trying to fly shop. And I, I know all of you know things to do with those things. So here's the, what I was looking for before. So this is all the potential veiled egg material. Up here, people fish with beads for salmon in the later part of the season very effectively, but you can just use the bits of yarn. And so people paint beads all different colors. Well, you could start with the yarn and color the beads to be the specific color that the fish happen to be taking too. Just, just some ideas of um, uh, ways to steer kids to realize that they don't have to have a lot of money to start into this. Probably the most expensive thing really is the tools. Um, and even that does not, I mean, it, it's hard to, to beat a good bobbin. And that, in my mind, costs a little bit of money. So when I teach, I actually teach, I provide Renzetti vices and reasonable tools. But the tools are all things they could afford. And I show them the sticks with Velcro on it to make a little brush and that they might be able to get a comb and a brush from their mom for makeup. And that you can buy boxes of these, which are clean between your teeth. And this is another really good brush and so on. Lots and lots of tools that you can make um, and you don't even need a really good pair of scissors because it's highly likely that you're going to be using your scissors to cut things and mess them up. So use cheap scissors to start with. And the, um, the electrical tackle pliers, I don't know. Oh, and the other thing that's, that's fun, I've painted some of my tools. It's just nail polish. Um, the, the kids really enjoy that concept too making the tools your own painting. Okay, back to flies. So the, the, uh, we started off on the soft tackle ostrich. So this is creating a spider. And uh, this, this is tied on actually a pretty small little hook, uh, but it fishes well in that size and that, that's why I'm doing it. So I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just talk through this. Um, it's, it's tied pretty much like a normal soft tackle. The difference is um, before you put on the ostrich hurl and you, you line up the tips to do that. And the, one of the points is that you want the, the hurl of the spider to be one and a half times the length of the hook. So that's your goal. And that it, it affects both the fish's uh, ability to to uh, get caught on the hook because they could you could have have too many fibers and get in the way, but it also makes a really interesting 
action in the water. It's a little different than a hackle, soft hackle. <laughs> um, and then there's a dubbing ball behind the, I guess I need to look at the camera every once in a while, a dub dubbing ball just behind the hackle that keeps them standing out and changes their motion. Um, and then I've, I've used the, instead of trimming, I, I put this in in sets of three um, or, or four if somebody's, I use three when it's such a small hook um, and, and not to trim the last ones, instead use those to wrap a collar and then a head. And, uh, and, and it has a, a wire wrap, so you're having them put in segmentation. So that's a, a soft tackle uh, ostrich. <laughs> and uh, it, so this is just a fun thing that's a little bit easier to achieve than wrapping hackle. And then the next thing they wanna know, but I want it to look like that. Then you show them how to wrap hackle. This is again, fairly fast to tie. Um, I'm trying to stay on task and time here a little bit. Um, the, the last fly that's on the list is uh, a dry fly. And when I get here, by then we're like, well, what's a dry fly versus the other? The, the mop is a wet fly because it's a wet mop. And the, uh, it, it kind of sinks and doesn't, has some action, but not a lot. Where the uh, wet fly, the, the ostrich hackle, swims in the water and that's what you want it to do. And you want, want it to kind of flare and, and leave, a, leave a wake that might even be a fish. It's hard to say what those really imitate. And this one is a dry fly. It's made using yoga mat for foam. And uh, I, I do these based on Tim Flagler's half Chernobyl uh, concept. And you could, you could watch that. He's, he's great to watch videos. So I tell the kids that partly because he's a great instructor and easily accessible. Um, but the yoga mat uh, is a lot thicker than the foam that's normally used. So this is a fairly floatable uh, little grasshopper bug attractor item. And then this is just polyester yarn. Um, it could be unraveled polyester fabric of some sort too, but this is just yarn from the store that has yarn or I don't actually, I only have pieces of it. So I cut it off of something. Um, and then it has a, a, a flash of blue tail and then there's, it's one of the things that's uh, interesting using yoga mat is the, the original fly, the half Chernobyl uh, has a very dubbed body, but it disappears in the yoga mat. So you can't really see all that. And then it, there's dubbing around. So, so the, the there, so it very dubbed body tail attached at the end of the hook. Um, there's a, you uh, put a hole Actually, I forgot that. You can pre-cut the foam, which is what this is, with one of the body cutters that's available. Or you could cut strips. And so the way this fly is tied is there's a hole put. Right here. So you actually make a hole with your um, and then you, you put that over the hook and, and tie that in. And then this flips over and is tied there. I think that probably makes sense. I usually trim part of this little tag off. Um, but whether you're using a pre-cut or a, a, just a strip that you cut yourself, I have one trimmed up. So you can see I, I cut a little tab on it. Um, and so the foam does not cut real well with the cutter anyway. It's not real precise. So you can cut it yourself really precise. Some kids will do a really good job doing that. One of the things cool about the yoga mat is it has this kind of interesting buggy segmentation. So it, it, to tie that with a longer body than I did, I of course thought of this later or I would have done it for today. You can make... Um, a reasonable engorged damselfly 
<laughs> with the whole concept, which you know we have a lot here, right? At this time of year, a, a thinner foam body too. But it's a, a very easy technique to tie what looks like a little complicated thing. And the, the legs on this, when you go, go buy rubber legs at the fly shop, you could buy all kinds of different varieties and it seems like you never have exactly what you need. So I suggest that if they're gonna buy material, that they buy something that's a solid color, then they could color it up. So this is, I've just used film and um, purple uh, Sharpie to, to create that. And, you know, I didn't try to make it regular or anything like that, but you end up with lots and lots of different color combinations with felt tip pins and most people have those laying around these days. So that's the, the yoga mat fly. And then um, it, and it only takes cutting a really thin strip from your yoga mat. <laughs> and if, you probably all know that's yoga mat. Tons and tons of material, just cut one strip off of it. Okay, so I summarized a lot there instead of uh, going on and on with the tying these. Um, they, they are fairly quick to tie. And so I'm wondering what questions do you have? Let's see and, what we have in chat. We have yeah. George commented um, on your mop fly, perhaps a Swiffer fly to be used in fast, dirty water for either brown trout or whitefish or a mop and glow bud fly. My mind oh, is yeah. reeling with options. George is on the ball tonight, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> and, you know, obviously part of this is fun. <laughs> And, and just humor and to, um, and, and the humor gets people relaxed and opening up and then uh, eventually interested in the more serious part of fly tying where you, you really are trying to imitate something specific and the part that uh, it gets beyond, that when, when if you have a bunch of beginners sitting there that they don't sit there very long before they're off to something else because they can't figure out why in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Ron, Ron made a good point that uh, painting your fly tying tools can also be useful for identification when you have a group of people tying together who have been borrowing tools from each other from your session. And, you know, if I painted, you know, pink fingernails on my stuff, is it, is it as likely to walk out as a, uh, as a non-pink painted um, <laughs> fly tying tool, just saying. Um, yep, yep. And Laura says for kids that don't have access to a vise, they can use an X-Acto knife handle to hold the hook and a wood base with a drilled hole to hold the knife handle. So that's that's a good tip. Thank you, Laura. Yep. That's a great tip, Laura. And the, the painting your tools, that's how I started was exactly that, to keep our tools separated. Um, and so I've gone through several iterations of that from putting a, a fingernail dot of the same color on all of my tools. And then we also, this is a pair of foldable scissors, but we'd make little beaded ties that attached and everyone knew exactly which those were. Um, because that is a problem if you're tying in a group of people, even a group of instructors and the students tend to move the tools everywhere and then you gotta, it takes longer to sort out the tour, tools than it did to teach the class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here's another example. This is my gold phase, gold dot on the bobbin holder. Great, uh, great Christian, idea. Christian uses tape on her tools when she loans them. Um, yeah. She's teaching. Yeah, so it must be just a little bit of tape on the handle or something, I could see that. Uh, Laura, Laura says, thank you for the ideas because she's a scout leader and she uh -huh. wants to get kids into tying. So these are great ideas. Uh, George had an idea. She, he uses old speaker magnets to pick up the hooks. They are powerful and find the small and big hooks. I put a handle on them. So when you swing them around, even in the grass, it finds hooks. How, how big are those magnets? Oh, oh hang on. Uh, yeah. 
Let's see if I can remove the spotlight and find George. Here we go. George is going to show us. Oh, good. Oh, you're muted, George. How's that? Up. There you go. Yeah, I, I use old speaker magnets, you know, from the sound systems from the 70s and 60s. They are powerful magnets and they're kind of outdated. They're better speakers and Bluetooth and all that. But those speakers are great. Even if you're by your car trying to hook a fly on and you drop the box, or you come out of the fly shop and drop that little box, swing that magnet around, it picks up everything. Oh, and the, oh. Oh, they're big. I mean, oh. from the big like woofers. Yeah, like that big woofers uh -huh. and tweeters. Just put it by oh. your bench. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, eight they're, they're inches like, around? Yeah, woofers and tweeters, the old ones, because they're hard. The new music systems use better speakers or different, but those magnets are just really powerful. And those little hooks, the 1820s, when you can't find them, that magnet just picks them right up. It's it's a great little tool. I, I just tie old fishing line on and swing it around, and man, it's picking up everything. Stuff you didn't know was on the floor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. George. Yeah. yeah. Heather, I... I Go ahead. Another option is um, if you go to Home Depot, they have the kind of extending, uh, it's almost like a uh, broom, but it just got a little magnet about a foot long and it's only about $10 and it works really great in the grass or wherever you're trying to use it to, to, to find hooks that have fallen. That's a great idea too. So um, I, I don't know what camera's on. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put it back to you, Cheryl. There we go. Okay. Okay. So this is a, a thing to retrieve canning jar lids when you put them in the hot water before you put them on to seal. This also works really good for picking up hooks. So when I'm teaching, you know, I don't, I don't like to teach too many more than six at a time, but um, I'll put these in the middle of the table. So if somebody, a hook pops over somewhere, you know, they could use this to grab it too. Um, and the other thing is I use these little um, silicon dishes and put a round ceramic magnet in the bottom of it. And when I hand out hooks, cause I, I hand out the hooks, um, they, they all have the materials selected, it, you know, ha have them pick out and cut their own piece of mop. But when it gets to hook, everyone puts out their little dish with the magnet in it and I drop the hook in it. <laughs> and that way it's someplace, you know, that big and visible. So that works pretty well too. And they're, they're light and easy to carry. What other ideas? This is great. It, there's an, another magnet that you can get at the craft store. This is nearly probably not as effective as the uh, the speaker magnets, but for uh, when there's a bunch of stuff on the, the table and you're picking up, especially if you have a tablecloth down, you just use this magnet to sweep back and forth and it helps pick up those little hooks too. Of course, the hooks can get stuck in the fabric. That's a bad part of that, but it catches all the loose things. So are there ideas out there? There's I another one. A little toothbrush. Most people have a toothbrush they're willing to sacrifice that, that works well as a tool. Actually, think about that for a minute. What other creative tools do people use? And for holding flies, these are photo holders. Holding my backdrop is another photo holder. I, don't, I can't get it down far enough. But so this one, I'll, I'll, it's actually, I guess I turn the camera up. I'll just turn this ca camera around to it. See if I can show it. It's a, it has all these little wires coming out with clips for photos. Yeah. And uh, so you just attach a fly to all that, each one of those, and people get excited about that. Oh, and the other fun thing is um, old fashioned bobbers. These make good fly holders too. How do they work? Oh, this way. <laughs> so another thing, they, they have to have a wider base like this one. This one is more difficult to balance. 
but so if I have a bunch of bobbers that I found somewhere, I'll hand those out along with the, the pool noodle. And you have a, well, the light is pretty bad. And my direction is difficult. I'll put a fly in here so you can see where I am. Cool. <laughs> so, you know, these are all little, really inexpensive ways that get people looking at materials differently. But just like, like this little, the crab, I've had people be real excited to come back and realize, yeah, those little crabs, they do have that bright orange. It's just that color. <laughs> it's fun realizing that there is a lot of color out there too. Okay. Well, I appreciate everyone's interest in this. So I think it's um, it's very fun, and I, I've uh, realized in the last ten years we really have a bunch of very creative fly tires out there that are making some incredible new flies, and I'm, um, they are very effective. And I, I don't know if anybody looked carefully. I'm definitely using steelhead fly techniques in my kids' flies. Um, that's where the ostrich came from instead of a feather. So there you have it. Well, thank you. These have been some great ideas when I'm working with kids or very new tires. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. That was a uh... That was really, um, I, I, I loved, I had no idea that the, you know, yoga mat kind of had the little buggy pattern and uh, fun ideas. I'm going to be looking at everything in the house with a different eye now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. Great, great tips. Um, we're still in um, um, women's fly fishing month. So um, we have... Uh, uh, Monday the 21st at 7 p.m. we've got uh, Gwen and Janine talking about fishing in Texas. Um, we will have um, several of our liaisons um, sharing with us um, you know what they're doing for the month and uh, are they are they will be sharing pictures of did they go out and fish with some kids or did they do a knot tying? Um, Karen, you're on, do you wanna say something? Yeah. Whoops, I caught Karen. She's covering her mouth. <laughs> Hello? Yep, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, this, this is my crappy computer. But can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. I'll talk slow. I just wanted to say oh. that money for our liaison, who are the regional representatives all around the country, so they can do more programs for women. We don't have a lot of it. We, we only have what we've raised. We're trying to be neutral with FFI. And, you know, so we, if we are going to um, raise money, we have to do ourselves. And so if you do support us during this month and make a donation on the FFI website uh, for Women Connect, it has to be for Women Connect, you have a chance to win a beautiful wall hanging that Gretchen made, Gretchen Beattie. And um, it's, a, it's a great uh, prize if, if you happen to win it. Every $5 gets you a, few, uh, a chance to enter. Or you can just donate and you know, or not donate and ask to be entered by mailing in a postcard. But that's, uh, you know, the legal way. But anyway, if you want to support Women Connect and help us grow and help us do more programs, help all the regional liaisons do more programs, donate this month, even a small amount, every little bit helps. <laughs> so that's commercial. And I want to thank Cheryl, who did a wonderful job. I was totally impressed with all these um, improvisational ingredients. And I want to say hi to Kim, who sent me a thank you present for the <laughs> thank you, Kim. It was the sweetest surprise. So 
I yeah. will welcome. Oh, should Thank I show you. them to everybody? Sure. Should I show everybody? Okay. Sure. Uh, I almost got in trouble with my husband because he thought I had a new admirer, but these are the flowers <laughs> Kim sent. Aren't they beautiful? Beautiful. Very pretty. And that's the other wonderful thing about women act is that you meet so many cool, cool women. So I, I hope. <laughs> uh oh. Friendships that. Oh, she hopes we all stay She's connected frozen. and make friends with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. And thank you, Cheryl. I'll just finish. I'm done. Of <laughs> the spotlight. <laughs> So, Sandy, can you hear me? Yes. Who's talking? Uh, George. Oh, hi, George. I'm ready to George, you yeah, I'm, in South America. I'm gonna mute. Uh, I I live in Florida in the winter. Or what? Were, what were we just? What was your question? Yeah, didn't you just go on a trip with a bunch of women in South oh, America? Oh my, yes. So let's let's. Uh, I, we just got back um, Saturday night or Sunday morning. Some of us. So um, um, those of us that uh, we got our first rooster. So there's Kim, wow. who's on tonight. Um, we she got her rooster pin. Um, we can't share these on FFI. I do have release photos because we picked them up out of the water and then put them back in the water. But um, yes, yes, that uh -huh. was a that was a uh, FFI women's trip. So um, mm. it was. Oh, I'll put Kim back up and then let me slide back to. Oh yeah, we all caught a Dorado. That's photoshopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, there's there's um. Uh, there, Lynn. Lynn, Lynn Vols. Yep. Um, there's our rooster ceremony. Um, grouper. Uh, there's there's a first rooster caught a baby. Uh, there's there's my there's me Yay. and I caught my first rooster. So, um, yep. It was it was a lot of fun. Wow. It was a good trip. Caught caught some caught some toros and. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're still all recovering because um, it's a lot of casting with big rods mm -hmm. and then strip, 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 strip. But I've been walking around for three days going, rooster, 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 rooster. <laughs> I'm still seeing roosters in my dreams. So um, <laughs> that was a good trip. <laughs> Thanks for letting us share our Not success. Everybody So keep stay Those tuned. Big fish are and, fun. Uh, yep, yep. We'll uh, we'll continue to add more trips in the future. So it's good to be a member of Women Connect. All right, everybody. We'll see you. Right. Um, right. Keep keep posting pictures for Fly Fishing Month. It's good to see everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good Thank night. You. Good night. Thanks again.